Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. A couple days ago here in Kalamazoo we had a really strong windstorm. Now fortunately we didn't lose power but it reminded me that if I was going to have a power outage it was going to be in March. Now it's February 22nd which means March is about eight days away. Okay, now I'm going to pour out the vinegar. Nice thing about apple cider vinegar is it doesn't smell bad. It just smells like vinegar. Even after it's been used and stored in this can for better than three months, still just fine. White vinegar starts reeking. I mean, just literally horrible smelling stuff. Now I'm going to go upstairs and wash this out with some baking soda and water just to make sure I've got all the vinegar out of the inside of it. So if I don't, the vinegar will cause it to rust right back. Won't need the gloves. Now that I've cleaned it and rinsed it, washed out the inside, just to make sure I get all the water out of it, I'm going to put some alcohol in it. Alcohol will absorb the water and evaporate completely. Allowing me to wash out the tank very thoroughly and make sure I don't have any water in it to cause problems later. Now, water in a Coleman lantern will not cause a problem per se as far as having the lantern light because the Coleman fuel will right on top of the water. and the, the lantern will burn, but it does cause it to rust out. And evidently somebody let water inside this tank. It's not rusted out, it's not rusted through, but it is rusted. Putting the vinegar in there pretty much seals that up. eats away the rust. Then I put baking soda and water in it to kill the acid in the vinegar. And I rinsed it out with water thoroughly three times. Let the water run right through the tank. give it every opportunity to get any particles out of there because of all those little jets in the burner any of these rust particles can get in there and jam the whole works up and when you want a Coleman lantern it's cold it's dark it's not a good time to be in there taking the whole thing apart trying to figure out where the dirt is Coleman lantern is not something that you just go well, let's see if it'll light today no, you go get it when you need it. <clears throat> now in a real bad situation, you certainly don't want to have your Coleman lantern be in this condition. And this one has gotten far too bad. That one there, it was a little dirty and it had a, a mud wasp nest in it and it needed new mantles but that was my old one and it sat out in the barn for a while and got dirty but it was still ready to run it's not rusty I kept it sealed up uh, it was in good shape 
This one I got at an antique store. You always have to be careful because most people don't sell the stuff that they want to keep and they want to keep all the good stuff and they sell off the stuff that they think, well, that's really too much work to make it run. Fortunately for me, making something run is a bit of an adventure in pastime. So I'm not bothered by it. Okay, I think we are ready to do an assembly. Now, this needs to be painted and I fully intend to paint it, but I'm only gonna paint it after I'm sure that it's working. In the past, I've learned the hard way that spending time putting something together and then finding out that it doesn't work because there was a major flaw that you could have fixed before you spent all the time painting it and now have to fix as in heating, replacing, whatever, makes a lot more sense to go in and do the repairs first and then paint it after your shirt works. definitely builds pressure. Remind me next time to vent it in a different direction other than my face. There we go. Valve sealing. Check valve is holding pressure. This aluminum, aluminum collar with a little steel wool.
there's a linkage inside here and a ceramic tube and a spring and a little needle little tiny needle don't damage it you want to have that little tiny needle go back all the way up in to that housing that means you have to gently push it back up in there this needs to go in and go past that so here we have a little juggling act down inside there there's a notch in that plunger I want to have this rod land right in the middle of that notch that means I want to have this threaded down in there so that when I tighten that up that moves back and forth because all that's supposed to do is take that little needle and move it up and down inside the tube okay we're lined up I have to make sure that's engaged and that slips up there and that goes over like that Now I could unscrew this thing. I don't really want to, but you know, I've got it this far apart. I might as well go ahead and finish the job. Taking it, taking all these little pieces out of it just means one more chance to break something then it's all about having everything work, right? Air goes through it okay. Now when I turn that rod, you can see the little plunger moving in and out, I hope. And that goes up inside this little tiny port here and cleans that jet out because Coleman knows and every once in a while despite your best efforts you screw up and when you screw up you get dirt into the tank when you get dirt into the tank doesn't work now that we've gone through connecting the plunger and how that works I'm gonna leave this off for a few minutes while I get this threaded into the tank through the cap Now with that lined up, I'm going to install this, which will then be engaged with a little plunger here.
3 8 wrench, tighten that up nice and snug. Now we're operating correctly. Now that I have the block in place, I can assemble this in there. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure that these little ports are open. There, all nice and clean. Screens are open. Thread those back on. I'm going to have to take this whole thing back apart again after I test it. But that's okay. I can paint it. It'll cost me a set of mantles. But I do want to have a nice working lamp when I get done. It doesn't do me any good to put it together and then take it apart and then put it together and take it apart three or four times. I'm not going to do a good job. One more full thread. screwdriver now I have to assemble this by sliding this tube up into there while the little inner piece is still out so it will engage the plunger now that I have that linkage back where it belongs, I can slide that up, run the nut up, tighten that up. up where it's supposed to be. Okay, I want to bend this line so it's straight. That way it's not going to rub against the shade. Good. 
If you guys have any questions about today's video or any of the other videos on the series, please drop a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all. <laughs>